Hopefully it goes alright. Uh, so, uh, most of us are used to use, doing some kind of statically typed programming and we're used to the idea of, that we're programming in values and the values have types. Uh, you could say like all we do as programmers is dealing with values. We take our input as values, we produce our output from values, and even the computations we do in the middle, often we model them as values. So values are very important. And the types of those values are, are where we get a lot of useful static properties um, to ensure correctness. There's a level above that. Um, not all types are equal. There, are, there is a way in which they are different. These types are of different kinds. So tonight I'm going to try and give uh, an overview of what kinds are, uh, what are the kinds that you would expect to see in the programming languages uh, that you deal with. Mostly this is focused on Haskell, but a lot of it uh, applies to uh, other languages of similar capabilities. And I'll talk about higher kinds, which are uh, an important topic and the sort of abstractions that you get from those uh, and how important they are. So we're all used to seeing values, right? We've got a string, uh, just some examples. I've got a string cat, a number three, that just frog is a maybe, we definitely have a frog. Uh, a lambda expression is a value and I've got an empty list. And you notice even as I'm talking about these values and talking about their types, so it's very natural for us as, as programmers to describe values in terms of um, what type of data they are. So you can see what the types are there. Uh, uh, so yes, yeah, strings, ints, maybes, uh, uh, lambda uh, as a carry function type, and a polymorphic uh, empty list. Now these, uh, these types are all of kind type. Now this is sometimes called star in Haskell, but it's it's moving towards uh, using type. So I'll be I'll be referring to it as type. So all of these are kind type. So they're all the same type. They're all the same kind. So uh, we might look at well, what is the same about all of these types? So we've discovered a kind type. So type is the kind of, of data types, and all values have a type of kind type. So string is a type, string can have values. So that's like your, your basic building block and everything builds on top of that. Uh, in the Haskell REPL, GHCI, you can ask it what the type of a certain variable, of a certain value is. So you can use colon type or abbreviation colon t. So, uh, and just string is an alias for a list of characters. So we can ask the types of those variables. Similarly, we can ask what is the kind of a specific type. So we can see string is of kind type and maybe string is of kind type. So this is really, really useful. So uh, let's dig into the maybe type a little bit more and see what's hidden in there. Firstly, let's create some values. So we've got uh, just frogs, which is a maybe string. You can see it's kind, it's type. And maybe maybe string is also a kind type. So these are all, all well kinded, all well typed. But if we have a maybe of maybe, then we get we get a kind error in the in the compiler. And it's saying that well the outer maybe is expecting something of kind type, but it's getting something of kind type to type. And this is a, a new type for us to, a new kind for us to, to talk about. So we can ask GHCI what, what is the kind of maybe, and it's indeed type to type. So let's look at the information in the declaration of, of maybe. So we have um, the data, the declaration of the type. It's got one type parameter and two constructors, and the second constructor has um, a value parameter. It has a parameter on it. But maybe it has a type parameter on it, so we refer to that as a type as a, a type constructor. So it takes a type and it returns a type. So there's like two parallel things happening here when we're creating the value. There's type construction and there's value construction. And they're kind of the same the same pattern. It looks like you're you're calling a function in both cases. So let's look at the parallels between them. 
So uh, we can see when we call just, uh, the just constructor is a function. We pass a, a value to it, and then we get um, we get a value out at the end. So we passed in a value, we get out a value. Uh, <coughs> when we go up to the type level, the maybe type constructor is a type level function. So we pass a type in. In this case, we're passing in string, and we get a string out. Uh, we get a type out, and the type is maybe string. So when we call a type constructor, that's like type level function application. Another parallel to notice here, um, just a syntactic one in Haskell, that we're using the same symbols, arrow, to um, represent functions and type level functions, and we're also using the the two colons to denote both a value is of a type and a type is of a kind. So type to type is the kind of unary function, uh, unary um, type constructors. So types of this kind don't have any values. You have to, you have to at least um, supply a type parameter to get a type that can have values. So maybe is a common type constructor. So um, one good thing about, about Haskell is that so in, in a lot of programming languages there are kinds behind the scenes and the type checker has to, has to deal with them but they're not always visible to you as a programmer. And we can, kind of, we can write like that in Haskell but we can also use our Haskell language features to dig under the covers and state things more explicitly like the compiler would see them. So if we expand uh, maybe, and we use the GADT syntax in Haskell, we can uh, we can add a kind annotation to the maybe type constructor. So we can say maybe is a kind type to type, and then we've also added the the types of the data constructors, nothing in just. We can expand that a little bit further. So when we say uh, nothing is a type maybe a. Well, that's for all A. So we can provide um, any type A, and it'll produce a maybe of it. Because, uh, I mean, we're dealing with parametric polymorphism here. So we're dealing with type parameters. It works for all. And if you were using uh, the PureScript language, whenever you introduce a type parameter, you need to use for all syntax like that, whereas in Haskell it's optional. And those A's are all of kind type. So all of that information that we have here was inferred by the, by the Haskell compiler, and now we're stating it all explicitly. So now we've seen two kinds. We've got type, the kind of types of values, and we've got type to type, which is unary type constructors. So maybe has one type parameter. Let's look at what happens if you've got two type parameters. So either has two type parameters, uh, a type for the left and a type for the right. We asked GHC what the kind of that is, and it's type to type to type. So it's a, a curry um, set of type parameters. Now, if we just partially apply this, if we supply a value for the first type parameter, then we get either string, uh, which is a kind of type to type. So then that's uh, a unary type constructor. So either string is of the same kind as maybe. And that'll be important later when we talk about functions. And then if we saturate that type signature, we're left with something like either string int of kind type. So you could uh, imagine then that we could probably create values of that type, and we can by calling the right constructor. So type to type to type is just the type of the kind of binary type constructors like either. And that can keep going on and on and on. You can carry as many as, as you want. Uh, and it doesn't get more interesting than that. There's just more of it. Now, this is where these languages at the top leave the room. That's all you get with them. Um, you can't get your money back, but that's it. And you need to move to a programming language to, to go further. So, um, yeah, we'll be dealing with Haskell. And I will talk a bit about that Scala as well. So, uh, yeah, everything here on in is like a selling point for a better programming language. Sorry? It's like on the same one as Java. That's sad. Which one? 
I'm saying you're very kind to go. Uh, I'm very kind to go. Uh, I've got another slide deck that, that um, splits the hairs between those languages. <laughs> There's a few categories of abominations at, at the bottom there. Anyway, so I'm talking of course about higher kinds. So Higher kinds are, are sort of like a, um, a type level analogy of uh, higher order functions. So with a higher order function, it's a function that either takes a function as input, produces a function as output, or does both. So when we take those functions up to the type level, that's basically what we've got with higher kinds. We take a type level function as input, or produce it as output, or both. Uh, but it's not just type level functions here, it could be type level, it could be um, a higher kind as well. So it's like type level or more complex. And um, so probably the most basic higher kind of type is functor. And so when you, you hear about a language that has the, the type system feature, higher kind of types, it means you can model things like functor, applicative, monad, and that is a huge advantage for, for a programming language. And those languages I had at the top can't do that. And that is like a huge, huge problem with those languages. Um, if you keep going further in them, you're gonna just keep repeating yourself because you can't use this abstraction. So the kind of functor, it takes as its input a unary type constructor. So a type of kind, type to type. And it returns a constraint. A constraint is just a Haskell thing. It's something that constrains the type of a type parameter as the input to a function or a type class or something like that. So, yeah, it's a, it's a Haskell specific thing. So, if it takes a type constructor as input, what happens if we pass a type constructor to it? So, maybe, is it the right kind? So, the kind of functor maybe, is a constraint. So you can see, uh, like on the type of the type of f map, functor f was was indeed a constraint. So we could use functor maybe as a uh, to satisfy a constraint there. So a uh, list is also a functor. Um, I'm not showing that how a list is a functor, but because it's of the right kind, it could be a functor. If we were to try and provide a, a functor implementation for list, we could possibly do it because it's, a, it's of the right kind. And IO is of the right kind as well. So here you can see these are all of uh, inputs of kind type to type. They're all unary type constructors. So you could kind of intuit just from the kind signature there, that a functor is probably a thing that abstracts over unary type constructors. It's a way in which list and mon uh, maybe and IO are all similar. And monad and applicative are also, um, also meet that description. They're things of, um, they're abstractions of unary type constructors. But if we try to put either in, what's well, the wrong kind? So either is either could not be a functor. But if we fix the first type constraint, if we fix the first type parameter, so we fix it to something like stream, then it's of the right kind. And uh, indeed, uh, either stream is uh, a functor. And no matter what we supply for that first argument, it's a functor. So it, it could be a functor for, for any type. So yeah, that's where it's really useful for, to be able to partially apply the, the type constructors to just supply one argument. And in Scala, for instance, you can't do that. So like its um, type parameters are basically paired or tupled instead of uh, curried. And that makes this a lot, pain, lot more painful you end up with things like the crazy um, type lambda hack and all the, the various hacks around that. So type to type to constraint, 
is the type of single parameter type classes in Haskell, and it's a higher kind. It's a really, really useful kind. Uh, and I, I emphasize in Haskell here because, as I'll show later, um, we can model front uh, in Scala, and it looks it's a slightly different kind. Uh, so I'll talk about that soon. So like we did for the maybe type, I want to take functor and I want to uh, write it out explicitly. So firstly, we'll provide we'll supply a kind signature for the f. So f, f is of kind type to type, and then I'll just expand the the a, a's and b's on the um, the type of f map. All right, let's switch languages to Scala. So in Scala, it doesn't have type classes, so you can emulate a similar thing uh, using a variety of different methods. One of them is to, to use the trait. Scala's REPL has the same colon type and colon kind commands as GHCI does, so it's, it's really useful to compare the two, but it, it speaks a different language. And to translate that, that's type to type to type. And the kind down the bottom is what Haskell's type classes are like. So you can see, yeah, there's, there's a difference there. And notice that in the Scala variant, the output type is, the output kind is type. So we can kind of intuit just from that, that, um, that type classes, when we, we model them in Scala, are first class, that there are values of type functor. Whereas in Haskell, constraint doesn't get your value, so um, type class instances are not first class in Haskell. Um, that's probably a good thing. That's that's <laughs> a, that's a debate that that's out out of scope of, of this talk. But it's just interesting to compare the two. Uh, I'll compare them again. Um, so I've got the Scala functor as a trait. The fully uh, the fully expanded Haskell variant and the contract, contracted Haskell variant. And actually, these top two uh, contain the same information. They both have all of the kinds of their types explicitly specified, even though it doesn't quite look like it in the, the Scala variant. And that's just because of the syntax. When I say F with the underscore in the square brackets, that means that that f is of kind type to type. And when I don't have anything like that, when I just have a type parameter, a or b like above there, that means it's of kind type. It can't be any other kind. So, Scala can't write something like uh, the, the Haskell um, compact functor syntax. So uh, in this way, we can say that Haskell has kind inference, whereas Scala does not. So these are all the, the kinds that uh, um, come across today. Um, there are certainly a lot more exotic kinds, um, but these are the, the ones that you come across in day-to-day um, -day programming. Uh, I just want to go back on type versus star. Uh, in the current GHC, uh, the default is to report uh, clients as star, and you can declare clients as star. There are language extensions that kind of change between the old behavior and the, the new behavior, uh, and I've used the new behavior for this talk. I think maybe the rationale for it is that it's more like um, other languages, like, um, like Idris, and that it's kind of weird to have a star in, in that syntax position, um, where it's, it's normally, a uh, star's normally like an infix operator. So beyond this, this is just kind of a, an intro to, to clients and, um, and, and the features they enable. The next level up is sorts. So all kinds have a sort. In Haskell, there's no syntax for sorts, but all kinds have a sort called box. I don't know why it's called box, it's just box. Uh, Haskell's also kind of in the process of collapsing the kind and type system so that they behave the same. 
And that's kind of on the way to Haskell becoming a dependently typed language where values and types are used a bit more interchangeably. Uh, you'll see things like set, set1, set2 in languages like Agda. In this fourth line, type and type, constraint kinds and so on, these are all advanced, uh, these are all um, language extensions you can turn on in Haskell to do various type level things that are kind of between standard Haskell and a fully dependent and typed Haskell. And when you go to dependent typing, you at the moment you need languages like this in that second bottom line. And that stuff's really, really interesting. And I highly recommend anyone interested in type theory to go and play with dependent types. Uh, I've got a couple of links here. Uh, the material in my talk is covered in that blog post in the first link. Uh, and constraint kinds, there's a good reference to that in, um, in the GHC documentation. All of those uh, language extensions I've talked about, they'll have um, entries on, them, on the Haskell wiki. And I'll post these slides up in the, the FPG uh, meetup slide. So, that's it. Any questions?